Good day. Here we are at Bad Camp 2016. Room full of people. It's a hall, an auditorium. <laughs> All right, so the session is about the role of Drupal, which is a content management system. It's not just a content management system, it's a framework and a platform. So there's a role for it in a lot of movements that are going on right now that are not filled with developers, <laughs> like the Drupal movement or the Drupal whatever we are. Some of us are a movement. <laughs> Some of us are still. <laughs> so these are the movements that I'll be talking about. Platform cooperativism, United States Federation of Worker Cooperatives, of which my cooperative Agaric is a member, um, the free software movement, and of course Drupal, which has a little movement off to the bottom of it called Drutopia. Does anyone here not know what Drupal is? Or can we skip this slide? <laughs> everyone knows what Drupal is because we're here at Bad Camp. Does everyone know what a cooperative is? And I know you can't read the slide, so you can't cheat here. <laughs> Maybe you better go over this one. <laughs> <laughs> yes. A cooperative is basically just a company. I'll explain it from my standpoint, being a member of Agaric. Um, we're based in Boston and Managua. Uh, Nicaragua, and a cooperative, we're formed as an LLC, just a regular company, but the reason we're a cooperative is because of the way we've written our bylaws and our internal governance. So to be a cooperative, the first thing is one member, one vote. Everyone who joins Agaric as a worker owner, we're a worker-owned cooperative, they become an owner of Agaric and a worker. So we own the company and we do the work. Cooperatives are based on seven principles. And uh, one is voluntary and open membership. We don't kidnap anyone <laughs> and tell them, greetings, we just started. And you know this part. I'm telling people what a cooperative is. So chime in and correct me. I have no ego <laughs> or add things to it. So the first principle is the voluntary and open membership. And that doesn't mean you have to let anyone in. It means that you can't like conscript someone or things that go on in the other businesses <laughs> where we go steal all the Apple folks and get them into our <laughs> cooperative. Um, the next thing is it's democratically member controlled. So in your bylaws that I was speaking about, um, you determine, and in your governance, actually, you determine what things are votable, like adding a new member to the cooperative would be something you would vote on, whereas getting napkins, extra napkins for dinner, you know, that's, <laughs> you don't have to vote on that. You're an owner, you can just go out and buy the napkins, put it on the bill. If you've determined a set amount that a member can spend without telling everyone or asking everyone, and as you know, in a company, there's always those little expenses that come up. I mean, how many of us have been waiting for a boss to okay some purchase order for pens or something, you know, something really trivial, and it's blocking your job? You know, this, I got so tired of that, that I would be spending stuff. Like, in schools, a lot of teachers don't have a budget for a lot of the kids' uh, supplies. So instead of standing in that huge bureaucratic line, they go down to the dollar store and they buy some notebooks. <laughs> but in ours, we get reimbursed. <laughs> um, there's also the member's economic um, participation, where everyone contributes equitably and democratically at, to the capital of the cooperative. In other words, we each get paid a monthly um, a monthly uh, salary, I wouldn't really call it a salary, it's a monthly amount that we've all agreed upon. So like if we were all going to be a cooperative, we would have a meeting at the beginning and say, how much do you need to live a month, Clayton? How much do you need, Misty? How much do you need, Leslie? And the highest number, that would be what we all make every month. But of course there could be some discussion if she only needs two, he needs one, and Leslie needs 10 because she lives in a palace and, <laughs> and drives a Mercedes, right? <laughs> so, <laughs> so
So then we'd have like discussions about how we could bring her rate down and um, things like that. The extra money or the surplus as we call it goes, stays in our bank and goes into a, uh, well it's our bank and we can vote at any time to do what we want with those funds. So if I'm walking down the street and I meet Mauricio and he's starting a business, wow, Mauricio, you, you have a really good idea for a business. Where are you going to get money? How would you like to be a cooperative? If he structures his business at a co as a cooperative, we can donate, not donate, but tithe money. We can allot money to help build this other cooperative. And the cooperative mentality is that everyone's kind of a network and we all kind of pool together to do this. Like I would know other cooperatives that I would call and say, Mauricio's starting a kick-ass business. It's gonna help the community. It's a, um, you know, a daycare center for um, all these people that have jobs <laughs> and kids. And so we would figure out, meet with him, maybe figure out what he needed and work with him to get the money if we can't give it directly. So members' economic uh, participation is really important. Um, autonomy and independence. <clears throat> That's pretty much what cooperatives are all about, the autonomy. As I was saying, standing in that bureaucratic line to get you know, your dollar for pencils <laughs> is, is not fun. So you need autonomy to do things that, and you need trust of your other cooperative members to know that they will do things that benefit the company. Um, I do a lot of crazy things but my cooperative members don't come to me and go, Mickey, let's add all this up. What have you been doing? You know, write everything down. You know, it's like, well, I should be writing a lot down. <laughs> we do try to write down what we do so we can go over it and say, um, was that frugal? Was that, did that lead to anything? Um, should we not spend money on that in the future? So we, we stay close. We have uh, weekly meetings with our group to stay on top of what we're doing. Because we don't just do our work. In a cooperative, we do a lot of outreach. Because we're having such a great time, we kind of want to tell everyone else how to do it and how to start this so that they can free up their lives. I don't have a division now between my work and my life. It's all one beautiful thing that I do. <laughs> I get up and do what I love to do. Um, the other principle, number five, is education, training, and information, which I was just saying. <laughs> we try to teach other people how we've done it and how we continue to do it. Agaric has been in business for 10 years, and we've never been hungry. So it's, it's, really, um, it's really enlightening to have. The, I've been in the corporate world. I've been in you know, major Fortune 500 companies. I've been um, on the... Uh, the what do you call it? The board of directors, and lots of giant things, and there's nothing that's been as rewarding as this. Nothing. <laughs> so cooperation among cooperatives, which is number six, I've also been mentioning. We try to do business with other cooperatives to help them grow and help them spread the message and help them be able to start new cooperatives. Um, like Mauricio's daycare facility. <laughs> so, um, the cooperative is a network. Think of it as a network that, um, say, like in the old days, you found a bargain right down the street, you're going to tell your neighbors, oh, I got these shoes for three bucks right over there, you know. Or if you found a nice coffee shop, you're going to tell your neighbors. Well, we do that in a cooperative way. And if there are businesses that aren't cooperation, I mean cooperatives and are corporations, we gently work with them. Um, like one of them, you might know, Pantheon. I'm working to get them to turn into a cooperative so that we can all own it and do the work and use it as our Drupal garden of love and you know just really help it grow. There's been a lot of studies because as you know economic people are extremely nosy and want to know where that penny is. Um, there's been a lot of studies going on about the earning power of cooperatives versus corporations. Well, cooperatives are exceeding the earning power of corporations. And it's based on a lot of things. You can't just point to one thing and say this is why. It's um, many things, but I think the foundation of it is everyone there is an owner of the company and they really care. They invest value. 
I mean, haven't you worked at places where people are getting paid like minimum wage and they like try to hide in the corner or, you know, like I'm going to go sleep in the boxes. I worked at some warehouses, you know, we used to love sleeping in the boxes, you know, <laughs> down at the bottom of the elevator shaft, you know. <laughs> it's crazy the things we did to avoid working for that man that was paying us. <laughs> I can't even tell you some of them. <laughs> but uh, it was you the... Lawyer advisors you never made <laughs> <laughs> exactly. <laughs> Statute of limitations, I'm old. That was 30 years ago. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, it's, it's amazing. You walk around this world and you see there's people in jobs and they're trying to avoid work. What is going on? Why can't we all be doing something we love and getting more work and passing it on? Well, we can <laughs> with a cooperative network. Um, the last um, principle, and these really aren't in an order of um, importance. They're all very important. Concern for your community. Uh, in the last, what, 30, 40 years or so, there's been a huge push to take everything out of your community, drain it to its like bare resources, and not have anything anywhere in there that workers could live in your community. They, they can't afford it. It's gentrified. Pr prices of rent go way up. So where are the people who work in the community supposed to live? They're supposed to live way over there where there's no grocery stores, no transit, no nothing, and just come in and do my job, you know, clean my house during the day or something. Um, it's called extractive um, technologies. These are companies like Walmart, things like that, that will move into your neighborhood and they'll maybe create five jobs <laughs> and uh, they will extract everything they can and take all that money that Walmart makes in your community from your neighbors and you and bring it elsewhere to do other, to maybe create another Walmart somewhere to suck stuff out of there. Um, we're trying to build infrastructure in our communities that supports itself and is um, bringing wealth into the community and keeping it there to build things we need, like schools with pencils and <laughs> things like that, schools with supplies and to support the teachers that are teaching our children who live in our community that are going to be throwing things at us when we're old. <laughs> we're not cool. <laughs> They'll be chasing you down. <laughs> Right. So, does everyone know what the free software movement is? No? Okay, Do you, does everyone know what free software is? Drupal is free software. Free software is basically determined by the licensing on the software. And truly free software means that it, the license will allow you to do anything pretty much with the software. You can change the source code, you can sell your product that you make from it, you can um, see into every part of its working mechanisms and change it, modify it, do anything you want. And it's also a way of protecting your liberty and security. If you can see in there, if everyone can see in there, there are less likely to be bad things in there. <laughs> Whereas a corporation who has proprietary software, their biggest fear is letting you know what bugs are in their software. So there are many hoops and gates um, that prevent that news from getting to the public. So even though you're an Apple user, you may not know of 10 bugs they found this morning and you may only know about one of them in three weeks you know, or something. You may never know about things they found and things they're not fixing. When someone in the free software movement finds a bug, like in the Linux kernel <laughs> or something like that, um, immediately thousands of eyes are on it, fixing it, because they use it. It's like they own it. They is us. We own it. So we get in there and fix it or at least create awareness of it. If you were to walk out, if you were to find a bug in an Apple thing and walk out there and tell people about it, and be like, ah, what are you talking about? Mine's fine. <laughs> you know? If you were to walk into a, a, a Linux conference and say you found a bug, everyone would be like, where? You know, <laughs> Give me that thing. <laughs> Let me at it. Um, so basically, it's a movement about your liberty and your personal security and 
not giving your um, security and liberty up to a corporation to let them take care of you. I've heard a lot of people that say, I know Apple knows what I need. You know, well, now they do. <laughs> they know more than... <laughs> they know what they need, too. But um, anyway, what I've coined from looking at all of this, all of these movements and people and you know, Drupal and free software and stuff is, you cannot successfully build a movement for freedom on a foundation of proprietary software. It's kind of like going to the king's castle and saying, I'm gonna tack my little room up on his turret there and I'll have a view. You know? <laughs> I don't think so. <laughs> you might for a few days <laughs> until the guards get up there and hack your castle. To... Never mind. <laughs> so has anyone heard of platform cooperativism? Great. All right, so we do know that Drupal is a platform, right? It's not just a CMS that we build our little websites with or our giant sprawling enterprise websites. It is also a platform and a framework for doing things. In other words, you could have a Drupal site that didn't even have a front page. A front. You won't need a themer because it could just without a face, it can run a fleet of trucks or you know, pretty much run a factory or run a town. It could do anything. Um, but we use it as a CMS because that's the most visible face for a non-developer to see, something that you can actually do with this. You can't show them a framework. You know, Here's how the trucks are running, and they see numbers and spreadsheets and stuff. It's like, oh, no. <laughs> but you show them a website, and you say, I built this with Drupal. They're like, wow, I want... 10 of those. <laughs> so online platforms are like Google, Uber. Um, a platform cooperativism is a platform that's owned by a cooperative of people like us that we could build an Uber for the drivers, the drivers own. It's like a company that is owned by the workers. So. Not much to doing that, except there's a huge uphill curve of adoption. People understanding why they need this or how they're gonna get involved in this. It's kind of confusing. So also tools that appear to be free, they come at the cost of selling your information, like the proprietary um, software. They want all of, not all of your information only. They want your friends' information too, and your family and your. It's okay, they promise not to be evil. This is true. <laughs> to some people, right. <laughs> so true, yes, they promise not to be evil, but we've got experience. And there's huge monopolies right now capturing important markets that are things we use daily. Search, transportation, and social networking. They're just taking them over so that we're on their channel instead of our own. Labor platforms are um, bypassing workers' protections, like sick leave, insurance pay, um, saying you don't need that. So users have no control over these platforms. We are users. <laughs> and we have no control over how Lyft or Uber treats their employees. Um, we can't tell Amazon to stop harassing their workers because we're busy buying from them. <laughs> So a cooperative puts people in charge, and it's uh, rooted in internationally agreed on principles like the Rochdale Principle, and there's successful companies like REI and Equal Exchange, a coffee place. Anyone heard of Equal Exchange? They're fair trade coffee, and it's really good coffee, but um, the the better thing about cooperatives is they're more likely to pay a living wage and promote community wealth. As I talked about before, not ignoring extractive companies and technologies and building companies in your, in your town that benefit your town. So democratic bus businesses experience a lower failure rates because everyone is invested in making it work. You're not trying to hide in the boiler room. <laughs> Maybe I could, oh, I'm thinking, that's so romantic now. Like, wow. <laughs> I go back to Boston and get a job in a boiler room. <laughs> and uh, also, the other tenet of cooperatives is that we are about serving people before profits. People come first because people make profits. There's no profits without people. 
but co-ops put us in control of that because of the voting, the infrastructure, the governance. So platform co-ops could bring democracy to the online economy. If we start to own the utilities, electric companies, gas companies, taxi companies, um, transport other transportation modes, um, if, if you control this, you're more invested in it, so it's not going to be like, oh, uh, you know, we need to raise taxes because the T is all crummy now and we need to rebuild rails and stations and stuff. It's like, no, these, t these stations are owned by the towns that they're in, and the cooperative town put, has money to put into them, so they're always nice, and there's a bathroom. No. <laughs> so, <laughs> um, if we owned our own social media, there wouldn't be that problem of people spying on us or twisting things, or hacking into our things. There would still be the problems, yes, but they would be attacked more swiftly. And we would, it's like now you can say, oh, someone hacked my account, blah, blah, blah. There's nothing you can do about it. If you're a cooperative and you run that, own that software, you can talk to that team. I was hacked by this and that, and it gets fixed. It's not like there's no one to go to because the system is is obtuse. I can't find an entry. Um, there's lots of new Bitcoin and blockchain technologies like Ethereum that people are working on diligently to find a, an equitable way for us to share voting and to uh, have multi-stakeholder governance in things. So the one person, one vote. So what does it look like in practice? Ah, should we test their internet? Let's see. Let's do it. Whoops, oh, I have to go back. Oh, whoops, I have to go forward. <laughs> My presentation is taking over me. All right, there's a company called Stocksy. Is anyone here an artist or a photographer? Do you know any artists or photographers? Yes, everyone does. Stocksy, let's check it. Dun, dun, dun. This is a site that's owned by the artists. Stock photos. People are making a living and cranking it out here. They own the company, they put their artwork on here, and they are able to sell it, and they even have coupons. That is cool. So this is a cooperative that was started by, I believe, one person, and it's getting huge. So if you know any artists, point them to Stocksy. Did my, um, oh, well, this is embarrassing. Right. Yeah. <laughs> ah, 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 ah. <laughs> I'll fix that. Where was I? Okay, so there's also Fairmondo, which is an online marketplace like Amazon, and it's huge in Europe, and it's just coming here. There's Loconomics, which is a find a job platform. Um, so to find a job, of, it's for freelancers mostly. I'll make my slide deck available too because um, that's why I left the links in. I didn't really plan on clicking them all here. <laughs> but um, this is just not working here. All right. Hmm. <laughs> my little full screen slideshow died on me. Oh. All right. So how can you take part? You can learn about platform cooperative and conferences that are happening all over. It came from an idea of two guys, um, two professors, and it's been a series of four years of events at the New School in New York. Um, and the first one I went to was three years ago. It was called Digital Labor. And I was just looking around at conferences and I said, Digital Labor? Is that me? And so I went there. And it was all about, it was very interesting, these high thinkers now are trying to figure out, what is digital labor? We're all doing it. When we click on a like button, someone's benefiting. Who, how? Well, interesting story. In Europe, if you're trolling people on a website, you can go to jail. It's a $2,000 fine immediately and two years and up to two years in jail for trolling people. Really? They actually impose civility on their citizens? Yes, they do. That's pretty fabulous. It is, and it's working to clean up their internet, but ours is a sewer, and you want to know why? Over here, instead of uh, punishing trolls, we hire them. Corporations hire them to troll their competition. Wow, oh, it raise the bar there. This is insane. 
this is insanity and it's junking up our highway. <laughs> it's like, oh, um, yes, sure, just jump in. Yes. What uh, country is it illegal? Um, is it illegal? Yeah. Um, this started in London, in England. Oh, London. Yes, and I believe Ireland has adopted it now too. But yes, it's um, a major crime, and they're really taking people to task for it. I guess there were a few awful incidents where people were harassed and trolled and committed suicide or horrible things happened from it, which can. You know, and here we're promoting it, but it's a secret promotion. It's not like anyone... Did any of you know this, that corporations hire groups of trolls on the Internet? Well, I mean, we all suspect it. Right, yeah. Scary. There's another job idea for me, the boiler room and a troll. Woo! I've got lots of opportunities in front of me. So I just Googled that and I found an article that said that it's soon going to be illegal in Arizona. In Arizona? Yes! See, really cool. it's spreading and we can help it by making it vocal. Just tell people about it. It's, um, that should be a, a real penalty for harassing someone online. That's just awful. Oh, yeah. I mean, women especially. I mean, wow. Children, women, people. It's like, what are we doing? We're so irresponsible that we don't catch this? Very bad. So now where am I? Oops. Okay. So let's see. How's this presentation going there, Mickey? <laughs> How's that slide machine working? Hey, well, it's free software. <laughs> So, we'll go on to Drupal-friendly hosting. Does anyone host their Drupal site with a Drupal-friendly host? Yes. Well, there's a plethora of them out there. Um, what does a site this, have to do, uh, host have to do to be specifically Drupal-friendly? Um, they have to do stuff for you. <laughs> That's Drupal-y. Like, um, let's see, what do they do? Um, well, they have those things that you need for the clean URLs all set. <laughs> that, you know, the environment. They, they do little environment tweaks. They're friendly about when a new version of Drupal comes out or a new update. They will let you know and ask if you want them to update it. Mm -hmm. Things like that. Just um, taking care of your Drupalness. You know, so sending out a security thing, even though Drupal does it, you know, they let you know as a host, we've fixed this and blah, blah, blah. So they're, they're pretty friendly and they, they can be a hands-on managed situation or you can manage your own server yourself. And um, we recommend Calibox as a great architecture for your um, Drupal needs, your Drupal environment. And it's by Kalamuna. I believe they're here. You should probably visit their booth and ask them about Calibox. It's, it's a really advanced, but easy to use for someone who's just into pointing and clicking and setting things up. This works. So it works on Linux also, GNU Linux. Um, there is also a movement within the movement called Drutopia. And it's an initiative to revolutionize the way we build online tools. So my way of explaining it in a nutshell is like Squarespace and Nation Builder have lowered the cost for launching a website if you're a grassroots or you know organization that doesn't have much money. Well, Drutopia, and Clayton will correct me if I am incorrect. My nutshell version of it is. A hosting platform where everyone is on Drutopia and they say you have five school websites or five nonprofit websites. They will all need similar customized things. One thing that um, nonprofits might need is a donation path, a workflow for donations that is pretty customized, like coupons, dates, you know, all of those things. Um, Drupal's great at setting up things like that, but if we had a shared platform like Drutopia, part of the hostly, uh, hostly monthly, <laughs> the monthly hosting fees can go to building customizations in Drupal and modifications that are needed by everyone, and if it's a cooperative shared enterprise, 
the peop the companies on your platform will be able to vote, kind of like a Reddit thing of which priority module or customization they would like, and then discuss it and go forward with it. Um, is that yeah, pretty, pretty good? Yeah, pretty good summary. Yeah, it would look similar to yeah, like, like something like Nation Builder, but because we're members, voting members, we help we help shape the roadmap of it. Yeah. Yes. So guiding and also giving those customizations back to the community. Mm -hmm. And also I can see many installation profiles or distributions coming out of this, like the, you know, music distribution for your band. You know, like all bands need similar things. They need, you know, like tour dates, buy your tickets, all of those customizations that if a band was to set up their website, it would cost them thousands, thousands of dollars that they don't have. So if 10, 20 bands, 30 bands can get together and do a Drutopia installation or, or hosting, they could just benefit by leaps and bounds by pooling part of their monthly fee to be hosted and designating how much of that they want to go into customization. So they look at the customization pool of money and say, there's only 500 in there now, we have 10 more users, now there's 5,000, now there's, okay, now what do we want to build with that? And you start getting ideas, well, we need a coupon, you know, a path to get a coupon that makes it really easy for people. You discuss how you would like the path to go, people can come to the designing meetings, then you vote on it. Is this what we need now? How soon do we need it? Who can build it? It's, it seems like a no-brainer to me. I mean, you'd really want to be able to do, do this, to uh, excel and uh, have success with your business. You, it's hard to do it alone, and that's why we see so many small business failures. They're not working together. <laughs> They're in competition. Competition can kill. There's healthy competition, yes. Um, my healthy competition would be in Drutopia, everyone in it going to look for the best coupon thing we could do, you know, <laughs> finding out the best examples of coupons and talking about it. But um, when we pool our ideas and our knowledge, we get much further. There's also a wonderful cooperative called Lumio. Has anyone used Lumio? couple of people. Have you heard of Lumio? If you have a company or a business, it's wonderful. It's a decision-making tool so that you put in, uh, like, we need to decide if we need storm doors on our house, you know, and then you can have a discussion about it. Like, someone can put, uh, well, I need to discuss it. Uh, what about, you know, I live in the south. I don't need storm doors. Why should I chip in for that? Well, because your friends in the north will be warm. <laughs> <laughs> so it's it's a way to discuss and have a group decision without having to all be present in the room at the same time. So it is a platform. It could be modified to be used for other things too. Um, there's also organizing campaigns. Anyone here organize any campaigns? Outreach, activism, things like that? Yes. There's a wonderful campaign called Rise Up, about a game, a board game that is just so awesome, a board game of how to rise up and become a cooperative person. Have you been able to play it? Is it out? Or is it? It's on a company right now. It's, uh, I work with a collective that's building the game, but it's about creating a social movement together to cooperate the game. Yeah, it's built by 98% from cooperative. Yay! Awesome. Yeah, it's on Kickstarter right now. That's awesome. Well, we hope next year at Bad Camp to have a, a we'll have a session where people can play it. It's great to have all of you in a room. Yes. A social movement. Yeah. That I'll try to make that happen next year, Leslie. Yeah, we just reached our goal yesterday, <laughs> so it's definitely going into production. So we're just trying to meet our stretch goals right now. How beautiful. Yeah, so I'll talk with Leslie and get her on my team. We'll present a strategy for some games at Drupal. Brain games and games that advance our citizenship and our social ability skills. Um, this is a, a campaign that I thought was really cool, Fight Back Wisely. It's basically an app that um, you can put up a, a cause and then you can say, ask people to join it and there's steps for joining, like I'll join this campaign when 300 people have said they'll join it. 
or I'll join it when it gets $5,000 behind it, I'll put another thousand in. Or it's really flexible like that. It's, it could be huge, but it needs funding you know, to get, to get built. Um, the, the man behind it has all the plans, all these, all these great ideas for it, but no money to build it. So there it sits on my screen. <laughs> but wouldn't that be wonderful? I will join this cause when 500 people say they will. Well, and that's so great too because as Kickstarter gets more and more distracted, they're just sold to Amazon. We had so Awful. many conversations about what happened to crowdfund. Mm -hmm. We need and to get away from Kickstarter. Away from that right away. Fight back wisely. Mm -hmm. It's um, a guy named Gary Crane from New York. Um, he's a really down-to-earth person that's just come up with this. He's so tired of people not joining because it's not big enough or it's not got enough money behind it. Well, sign up to join when that happens, and it alerts you. It's reached the goal, 5000 Will you put $10 in now? You know, Great. I will. I would like to block tankers, coal tankers. <laughs> so... Right, we use free software to build things. As I said, Drupal is free software. It's one of the best free softwares I've ever seen, besides SendMail. <laughs> and um, GPL version 3 is the most strict free software license. Something doesn't have to be GPL version 3, but that's the, the goal we're heading to, so that it's totally free for you to do any, anything you would like to with and make it better. Um, my comment on that is, anyone got an answer? Who will? Anyone can tell me someone who will? Micro, app, and it, no. We all know them, right? Are they our daddy? No, they're a babysitter, but we've got to tell on them. <laughs> they molested us, yes. <laughs> it's horrible, but true. <laughs> they are the babysitters, but yeah, we can get rid of them if we make enough noise. It's an upcoming event in New York. Anyone from the East Coast, New York area? If you can get there, please do. You will make connections beyond your belief. This is platform cooperativism. Um, it's at the New School in New York next month in November. This was the uh, is the part of the four year um, thing at the New School about platform cooperativism. Um, the other one, I, the first one I went to, I told you was called digital labor, and this one is just called building the cooperative internet. Um, I made so many huge connections just by walking into this building two years ago that my life just went from here to here. So if you can all get to New York for this, please do. Um, I am trying to bridge communities and movements that need each other. There's Drupal developers for miles. We can fill auditoriums and stuff like that. Not today, but... <laughs> But there are tons of them, and there are all these movements of grassroots people and non-grassroots, even other lofty movements of intellectuals that have no developers, no programmers that they ever meet or talk to. They're all just talking to professors and theories and stuff, and you walk into the room and go, theories, screw that, I can build it. Here it is, two minutes. <laughs> you know? Log in. You know? And uh, they're all like amazed, like, really? I could have something up? Tomorrow? You know, <laughs> it's like, no, this afternoon. <laughs> it's like, so um, it's just amazing a wealth of good people trying to do good things that don't have the developer tools to make it solid and real. So they're in a vacuum. We've got to pull them down here and go, look, it is real. <laughs> so, how do you get involved? These are some websites that you can go to to get involved. Free Software Foundation is the first one. Obviously, we've all been to Drupal, and we're all going to Drutopia. <laughs> and then there's usworker.coop, which is the United States Federation of Worker Cooperatives. They are an incredible group that um, kind of gets all the cooperatives in the United States together to talk about issues or 
do things and they have an event every year once on the east coast and then the next year on the west coast and then there's a one in the middle for both coasts um, it's every other year on each coast so that is a wonderful place to go if you are looking for clients with really cool projects um, if you know developer if you're not a developer and you know developers please tell them to get to some of these conferences if they want some meaningful meaningful work the internet of ownership net is a site that is um, actually building some of these platforms right now as we speak let's try the internet again and see if we can go there intern because it's very cool these are actual whoops that's not it that's the photo gallery of something else that's my secret sauce wait no <laughs> just kidding my recipe um, it's the internet of ownership I just hit that button and it's organized by Nathan Schneider who is one of the um, founders of platform cooperativism so this as you can see is like a directory of all of these projects and we're filling in the status like does it, it needs developers or needs promotion needs um, a board of directors whatever the needs are will be filled in here but as you can see it's lots and lots and lots and there's a few pages of this so we are here we have arrived but the awareness level is like this it's really low did you know that there are 50 cooperatives larger than Facebook Wow! did anyone know this I found it out two days ago. 50 cooperatives larger than Facebook. Okay, let's go. <laughs> in, in terms of uh, workers? In, in terms of capital? Oh, in terms of capital. Yes, oh. capital and um, that's a good, good point. They just said capital. I wonder if the workers, if there's more. Well, unfortunately, I found that out two days ago, and I've been on the road ever since. I've been trying to get, let me research that. So, yeah. please tell me. <laughs> so anyway, you can see there's cooperatives of all different kinds, shapes, digital platforms, open collectives, people's ride. You know, the, there's just anything you can think of that people are trying to put to, or not trying. They're putting it together. And um, they've just got lots going on here. You see, there's 125 of them already. And this just started a little while ago. So that's something to, nothing to snarf at. <laughs> Let's see. There's some useful online directories, like the one I just showed you. There's findcoop, find.coop, which you can find a cooperative to buy from or use. And there's alternative2.net which will help you find responsible software. Like if you're using something proprietary, like Photoshop, you can go there and type in Photoshop and it'll tell you GIMP, you know, things like that. You can choose what type of licensing you're looking for. I've included uh, more resources and links, articles about cooperatives, some videos you can learn about what a cooperative is and how to start a cooperative. And there's a wonderful mailing list for developers called a tech worker co-op related mailing list and it's the uh, techworker.coop website it's a really cool mailing list where people ask questions and actually get answers about um, what they're building and how to be responsible and ethical about it so we'll just leave you with this and also let you know um, there's a book coming out next month I'm really lucky to have a chapter in it. It's called Hours to Hack and to Own. And it's a handbook about how to create a cooperative and stuff. Hello. Hello. So we're just going into the question and answer period. <laughs> Does anyone have any questions? Hello. Is your slide deck available online? It will be. 
I'll put the slide deck available, and where can I put so you'll know that it's there? That's a good question, huh? Where do they, are the videos just posted to YouTube, or are they indexed somewhere? Uh, in, on YouTube, there is a Batcam channel, mm -hmm. so they're recording this for years, so certainly three years ago. Okay, but there's not some place where you can also make files. Oh, no. No, that needs to be organized better. We need to have a... Well, wherever you put it, maybe in the description? Yes, I'm going to put a link in my description. But who goes back to that after they've seen the thing? You will. Tell us it's there. It's going to be there. I'll put a link to my um, slides in the description of today's session. That could work for everyone. So is anyone here in a cooperative? That's my question, actually. Um, yes. From Costa Rica, I was trying to find out how difficult it is to somebody from the country to join you know, something like this. The coolest thing about cooperatives is even if you're in um, the U.S. and you're an undocumented citizen, you can become a, an owner of a cooperative. So it is easier for people from out of this country to be, become a cooperative here in America. But I'll let Mauricio answer that. He's from Managua, and he's part of the co we're in a cooperative together. So how, what would you give him for advice in Costa Rica? Um, you mean to join or to work with? Like, for example, when I, like two years ago, uh, I started looking for, you know, to put a job as a contractor. And I just, like, in every, like, without knowing, I was the companies that were open to work with me were cooperating. Because they didn't care about my location, they didn't care about my name or anything like that. Uh, I understand that for some real reason, some U.S. companies only contract people local and on site. But cooperatives are more open to that, so, um, actually, there there are listings of the jobs uh, here. I know there is people from Magali, us, Palante, which is another one. Palante uh, Tech. Uh, yes. What's her name? Angola. That too. But if you look, if you look like for directories of tech cooperatives, a lot of them in Drupal, and they usually allow people. And if you want to join, you, you just go through a process and no matter where you live, like Cola, for example, like we have, you know, we, we have had people from Europe, myself in Latin America, and people here in the States. Uh, Cola, they have people like all over the world, like India, Asia, Africa, United States, Europe, like, that's, there's no restriction about it. And they are working on it. Did that answer yeah. it for you? Okay. Are you? Do you work with Drupal? Yeah, yeah. Actually, uh, I have a partner. We have a company. We're about 20 guys working from Costa Rica over for phase two uh, companies like that. And uh, we, we've come to a point where we, we, we're thinking about we gotta give more back in terms of helping all the community in our country. So we work with like um, there's communities uh, that help people in terms of needs of food, like shelters and stuff like that. We build websites for them and we have a platform to a game. So there's more stuff that we want to keep going and it seems like this is the right path for me to you know, go that way. Yes, to at least look at it thoroughly. Yeah, great. So we'd love to connect with you and help in any way we can. That'd be awesome. Cool. Any other questions? Wait, were there the boff? Yeah. Um, yeah, the boff. Is there a boff? Yeah. Well, there's a BOF sign-up sheet that wasn't available this morning, so we're going to head down there right now and sign up, and I think we're going to try and get a slot during lunch or after lunch. Um, and so, I guess look for the BOF schedule for um, the Drewtopia birds and feather. Um, so that's what myself and Leslie, and Mickey's also involved in it too. Um, and yeah, so again, that's using the distribution model and um, features in Drupal 8 to be able to um, build an ecosystem basically of distributions that have one for a school or one for a food co-op and, and like kind of what you were saying like if we built a donation functionality that's 
starting out for the food co-op, and then you know being able to like plug that into a different distribution as well. Um, yes, important widgets there. Yeah. Great. Well, thank you, everyone. Thank you. Thank you.